good morning dear children uh, i think we already finished the lesson gravitation but problems are remaining so in today's class uh, we can do the problems on this chapter okay all of you have the questions that i have given okay let's do one by one see the first question the mass of earth is 6 into 10 power 24 kg and that of moon is 7.4 into 10 power 22 kg if the distance between the earth and the moon is 3.84 into 10 power 5 km then calculate the force exerted by the moon on the sorry force exerted by the earth on the moon isn't it that is the question uh, here actually the mass of earth is given as m1 that is taken as m1 so mass of earth is actually 6 into 10 power 24 kg and that of moon is that is taken as m2 uh, 7.4 into 10 power 22 kg and the distance between the earth and the moon that distance is taken as r or d you can take so r is equal to 3.84 into 10 power 5 km okay then calculate the force exerted by the earth on the moon so we have to find the force between the earth and the moon actually uh, this force can be um, finded by using uh, newton's law of gravitation or universal law of gravitation according to universal law of gravitation uh, we can write the expression for the force between the earth and the moon you know that is what is universal law of gravitation mathematical relation f is equal to g m1 m2 divided by distance square that is r square listen it that is the equation okay then we can substitute the values there you know uh, here the distance between the moon and earth that is 3.84 into 10 power 5 km actually it is in kilometer that thing we have to convert it into meter so uh, 3.84 into 10 power 5 into actually on kilometer is equal to what 1000 meter so we can write 1000 uh, can be written as 10 power 3 Isn't it? So, uh, 10 power 5 into 10 power 3. That is actually 10 power 5 plus 3. So we got uh, 10 power 8 meter. Okay, that is the distance. So 10 power 8 meter. And here uh, we have the expression for force. F is equal to g m1 m2 by r square. Then we can substitute the value. You know what is g capital G? You should know the value of capital G. Okay, that is the uh, your uh, gravitation constant. Actually, it is. Six point six seven three into ten power minus eleven. Okay, into mass of Earth six into ten power twenty four into that is mass of Moon seven point four into ten power twenty two. That divided by distance square that is three point eight four into ten power eight. The whole square. Okay, that is actually the distance square. Then actually simplifying this. Uh, we'll get the value two point naught on into ten power two newton. That is the force between the moon and earth. Two point naught on into ten power two newton. Listen it here. The mass of earth is given as six into ten power twenty four kg, and the mass of moon is given as seven point four into ten power twenty two kilogram. Then the distance between the moon and earth is actually three point eight four into ten power eight meter. Okay. Then we have to find the force between the Earth and the Moon, and this can be founded by the help of universal law of gravitation. That is, F equal to g m on m two divided by r square. And substituting all the things, we get the value of force as two point nine zero ton into ten power two newton. Okay. Next, the second question is: two bodies of masses five kilogram and fifteen kilogram are separated by a distance of five meter. Calculate the gravitational force between them. Isn't it? That is the question here. We have two bodies of masses, 5 kg and 15 kg. So m1 is taken as 5 kg, and the m2 is taken as 15 kg, and they are separated by a distance of uh, 5 meter. That is r equal to 5 meter. We have to find the gravitational force between them using the same universal law of gravitation. We can find the expression for forces F equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square. Listen it. Then we can substitute 
जी सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन थ्री इंटू टेन पवर माइनस इलेवन देन एम ओन आस फाइव के जी एंड एम टू इज फिफ्टीन के जी डिवाइडेड बाय डिस्टेंस स्क्वायर इज एक्चुअली फाइव स्क्वायर इसे नीड एंड बाय सिंपलीफाइंग दिस वी विल गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ फोर्स आस ट्वेंटी पॉइंट ज M1 equal to 5 kg and the M2 equal to 15 kg and they are separated by a distance of 5 meter. We have to find the gravitational force between these two bodies. Okay, so we, we know the relation for force. Uh, F is equal to G M1 M2 divided by R square. Then substitute the value of G 6.673 into 10 power minus 11 and the M1 as 5 kg and the M2 as 15 kg divided by distance square is 5 square. And simplifying this, we will get the value of forces 20.01 into 10 power minus 11 Newton. Next, the third question is, gravitational force between two bodies of masses, M1 and the M2 is F. What will be the force between the two bodies if their separation becomes half? Here actually given, the gravitational force between two uh, bodies of masses, M1 and the M2 is actually F. So, we can write F as G M1 M2 divided by R square. Listen to it. This is actually the gravitational force between two bodies of masses M1 and M2. Next, we have to find the force between the two bodies if the separation becomes half. Okay, that is R becomes R by 2. When R becomes R by 2, then what is the force? That thing we have to find Isn't it? Next we have to, uh, here actually the separation between two objects is R. Next, uh, next we are going to uh, half the distance between the two objects. We are going to reduce the distance as half of the original distance. Then what is the force? That thing we have to find. Okay. And that force is we can represent it as F dash. Isn't it? So G into M mod. Actually, this is equation number 1. Okay, M1, M2 divided by, now the distance is reduced by half. So, R becomes R by 2. So, R by 2 the whole square. Okay, R by 2 the whole square. So, we can write G, M1, M2 divided by R square. Isn't it? Here actually, uh, R by 2 the whole square. Then what is that thing actually? R square by 4 actually. That uh, 4 actually comes here. Listen it. So we got 4 G M1 M2 by R square. Or if you look equation number 1 actually what is it? G M1 M2 by R square. That is equal to actually F. So we can write instead of this 1. We can write 4 into F. So now the force becomes 4 times the uh, original force. Okay. Now the force becomes 4 times the original force. That is F dash is equal. This is the new force actually. The F dash is equal to 4F. Isn't it? And here the gravitational force between two bodies of masses M1 and M2 is actually F. So F can be written as G M1 M2 by R square. Next what will be the force between two bodies if the separation becomes half. Actually the separation is R. Now we are going, um, going to reduce the separation as a half that is R becomes R by 2. In that time we have to find the force between the two bodies and that force is actually represented as F dash. So F dash is equal to G M1 M2 divided by R by 2 the whole square. Actually that becomes R square by 4. That 4 goes up. Okay so 4 into G M1 M2 by R square. G M1 M2 by R square. Then instead of G M1 M2 by R square, we can write F. So we can write F dash is equal to 4F. That is the new force. That is when the distance is reduced as half, the force becomes 4 times the new force becomes 4 times the original force. Listen it. Next the fourth question is, Mass of an object is 10 kg. Then what is its weight on the earth? Okay, here the mass of the object is given as m is equal to 10 kg. Okay, then we have to find the weight on the earth. 
okay we have to find the weight of that object on the earth all of you know the equation for weight what is the equation for weight w is equal to okay w is equal to m into g okay mass is given as 10 kg but you know, uh, what is g you know the value of acceleration due to gravity g what is its value that you should, should memorize the value okay what is the value of g actually 9.8 meter per second square that is the value of g acceleration due to gravity okay the value of capital g and the value of small g that thing you should know very well okay here small g is actually acceleration due to gravity its value is 9.8 meter per second square okay then we can substitute instead of mass that is 10 kg then 9.8 g is actually 9.8 isn't it by multiplying this we get 98 newton that is the weight of the object on earth w is equal to 98 newton okay here the mass of the object is 10 kg we have to find the weight of the objects on object on earth you know all of you know the equation for weight w is equal to m into g then we can substitute you know the value of g what is acceleration due to gravity you know the value of acceleration due to gravity actually it is 9.8 meter per second square then substitute for m and g 10 into 9.8 we will get the value of weight as 98 newton okay okay next the fifth question a body weighs 60 newton when measured on the surface of earth what should be its weight when measured on the surface of moon okay that is the question here the body weighs 60 newton on measured on the surface of earth so the weight of that body on the earth surface that, that is actually 60 newton that is we that is taken as 60 newton weight of the body on the earth surface that is 60 newton we have to find its weight when measured on the surface of moon okay we have to find the weight of that body on the surface of moon wm that thing we have to find isn't it you know the relation between the weight of an object on earth and weight of an object on moon you know what is weight of an object on moon actually you know the relation actually it is 1 by 6th of weight of object on earth isn't it weight of an object on moon is equal to 1 by 6 of weight of that object on earth so we can write 1 by 6 into 60 actually it is 10 newton so the weight of that object on moon is actually 10 newton okay here a body weighs 60 newton when measured on the surface of earth so weight of that body on the earth surface is given as 60 newton we have to find its weight when measured on the surface of moon so we have to find the weight of that body on the moon surface all of you know the relation between weight of the object on earth and the weight of the object on moon that is weight of an object on moon is equal to 1 by 6 of weight of that object on earth okay so we can write 1 by 6 into 60 that is actually equal to 10 newton okay that is the weight of an object on moon next the sixth question is what will be the acceleration due to gravity at a planet whose mass is 8 times the mass of the earth and whose radius is twice that of earth okay given g on earth is in question itself it is given as 10 meter per second square okay that is actually the question here uh, what will be the acceleration due to gravity at a planet whose mass is actually 8 times the mass of earth the mass of uh, planet is take, we have to take as 8 times the mass of earth and the radius of planet is actually twice that of earth then we have to find the acceleration due to gravity on the or planet okay we have to find the acceleration due to gravity at the planet a planet okay and the value of g on earth is actually given as 10 meter per second so actually its value is 9.8 meter per second square approximately can taken as 10 meter per second square okay in question itself it is given that the value of g is 10 meter per second square listen it that is the question 
all of you know the value of g acceleration due to gravity on the surface of earth g is equal to gm by r square okay actually it is uh, in order to differentiate the mass and radius from planet we can represent it as me and re that is mass of earth here it is radius of earth that is the acceleration due to gravity on the earth surface g is equal to g me by r e square in the similar way we can write the acceleration due to gravity at the planet that is g is equal to g m by r square okay g m by r square actually this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2 here m represents the mass of planet and r represents the mass of earth okay so uh, radius of planet where m represents the mass of planet and r represents the radius of planet and the question itself it is given the mass of planet is mass of planet is 8 times that of earth mass and the radius of planet is twice that of earth radius okay the mass of planet is 8 times the mass of earth and the radius of planet is 2 times the radius of earth then we can substitute here the acceleration due to gravity on plan at the planet is taken as the uh, g dash so we can substitute g dash is equal to g into instead of m it is 8 m me and then divided by r square actually it is 2 r e the whole square so we got 8 we can write first then g m me by this uh, 2 square is actually 4 then r e square isn't it then 8, 8 by 4 actually it is 2 g m me divided by r e square let it equation number 3 okay so we got g dash as uh, 2 g m me divided by r e square actually this is g dash then we can divide 3 by 2 equation 3 divided by 2 that is g dash divided by sorry 3 divided by 1 g dash divided by g is equal to what g sorry ah uh, okay 2 g m e divided by r e square then all divided by actually g m e by r e square okay then we can uh, take the reciprocal and multiply so r e square divided by g m e isn't it so this g g cancel r e square r e square then m e and m e so we got g dash by g is equal to actually 2 but we have to find the value of g dash so g dash is equal to 2 g okay actually g is given as in the question itself g is given as 10 meter per second square so 10 into 2 into 10 it is actually 20 20 that is it is 20 meter per second square that is the acceleration due to gravity on the at the planet actually it is 20 meter per second square isn't it here actually the uh, acceleration due to gravity we have to find the acceleration due to gravity at a planet whose mass is 8 times that of earth so mass of planet is taken as 8 times the mass of earth and its radius is 2 times that of radius of earth so the mass of planet is 8 mm and the uh, radius of planet is 2 re then we have to find the acceleration due to gravity on at the planet okay but you know the value of acceleration due to gravity of earth that is g is equal to g mm divided by r e square in the similar way we can write the acceleration due to gravity on the at the planet that is g m by r square then we can substitute instead of m we can write 8 m instead of r we can write 2 r e the whole square by simplifying this we will get 8 by 4 g m e by r e square so g dash is equal to 2 into 2 g m e by r e square then we can divide equation 3 by 1 that is g dash by g is equal to 2 g m e divided by r e square e r e square divided by actually g 2 g m e by r e square then we can take the reciprocal of this and multiply so r e square divided by g m e 
then we can cancel these things and we got g dash by g, g as 2 so we can write g dash is equal to 2 g then you know the value of g is 10 so 2 into 10 actually 20 meter per second square that is the acceleration due to gravity at the planet is 20 meter per second square next the seventh question is the weight of a man is 98 newton on the earth what is its mass what is his mass uh, on the moon. What is the uh, mass of the man on the moon? The weight of the man on the earth that is W is given. Okay. Weight of the man on earth is actually uh, 98 Newton. Actually weight, you know W is equal to mg that is given as 98 Newton. Then what is the mass of the man on the moon? We have to find the mass of the man on the moon. Listen it. Actually this is the weight of the object on uh, on the weight of that man on earth is actually 98 Newton. From this we can calculate what? Uh, from this we can calculate the mass of the man on earth. That is m equal to what? Actually w divided by g. Isn't it? So w is given as 98 Newton but you know g. G is actually 9.8 meter per second square. Okay. So 98 divided by 9.8. So we got 10 kg. Actually it is 10 kg. This is the mass of the, the mass of that man on earth is 10 kg. Then what is the mass of the man on moon actually? Mass of the man on moon. You know mass is a constant. It does not uh, vary from place to place. So uh, the man's man is actually 10 kg itself on the moon also. Listen, if we already learned, the mass remains constant um, whether it, uh, that any object or man is in planet or moon, earth, anywhere, the mass remains a constant. So, actually the mass of the that man on earth is actually 10 kg. On the moon also the mass remains constant as 10 kg. Listen it here. The weight of the man is actually, uh, weight is given as 98 Newton. So, you know the equation for weight. W is equal to mg is equal to 98 Newton. We have to find the mass of that man on moon. Isn't it? So first we can find the mass of that man on earth. Using the relation m is equal to w by g. So w is 98 and you know g is 9.8. By simplifying this we will get 10 kg. Okay, this is actually the mass of that man on earth. So, uh, but we have to find the mass of that man on mass of the man on moon you know the mass remains constant so the same mass mass does not change so the mass of the man on moon is also 10 kg okay next the eighth question is a stone is released from the top of a tower of height 19.6 meter calculate its final velocity just before touching the ground here actually a stone is released from the tower Okay, whose height is actually given as 19.6 meter. Then we have to calculate its final velocity just the just before the stone touches the ground. So we have to find the final velocity B. Listen it. And here um, the initial velocity because it starts from rest. So the initial velocity is 0. Then you know uh, we have the relation. Okay, you know the equations of equations of motion under free fall that we have learned the three equations that is actual v square equal to uh, u square plus 2gh isn't it you know the relation uh, v square equal to actually u square plus 2as and this equation when uh, here the uh, object moves under uh, the earth gravitational force so it's uh, this relation changes to this form that is v square equal to u square plus 2gh instead of a here we have to write the acceleration due to gravity and instead of s the distance traveled we have to write the h height so we can we can have the relation v square equal to u square plus 2gh you know the value of g acceleration due to gravity the value of g is actually 9.8 meter per second square okay then we can substitute the values and then v square equal to actually v square equal to u, u actually 0 so this term becomes 0 then 2 into actually g is 
9.8 meter per second square and uh, h is again 19.6 meter then actually 2 into 9.8 actually it is 9.6 again 19 sorry 9 2 into 9 9.8 is 19.6 Again, it is 19.6. B square is actually this one. Then B is square root of 19.6 into 19.6. What is the square root actually? Root 19.6 into 19.6. Actually, it is 19.6 meter per second. That is actually the final velocity of the stone. B is equal to 19.6 meter per second. Listen it. Here a stone is released from the top of a tower whose height is 19.6 meter. We have to find the velocity just before that stone touches the ground. Here the initial velocity u is equal to 0. Then the acceleration due to gravity is actually g. 9.8 meter per second square. We have to find the final velocity. So we are considering the relation. V square equal to u square plus 2 g h. Okay. Here v square equal to here the initial velocity is 0. So this term cancel. Then 2 into g is actually 9.8. Then h is 19.6. Then v square is actually 19.6 into 19.6. Then v is square root of 19.6 into 19.6. Well, take the square root. We will get the value of v as 19.6 meter per second. Okay, the ninth question is. A stone is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 40 meter per second. Taking g equal to 10 meter per second square, find the maximum height reached by the stone. Also, we have to find the net displacement and total distance covered by the stone. Okay, that is the question. Here, a stone is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity, that is u is equal to 40 meter per second. And taking g as 9.8, sorry, 10 meter per second square. G is given us. 10 meter per second square. We have to find the maximum height reached by the stone. Okay. We have to find the maximum height that is reached by the stone. And also we have to find the net displacement and the total distance covered by the stone. Okay. You know at the maximum height. At the maximum height actually the final velocity B, B becomes 0. Okay. The maximum height the final velocity B, uh, B becomes Zero. So first we can find the maximum height considering the relation b square equal to u square plus 2g h. Okay, b square equal to u square plus 2g h. H we have to find it. Listen it. Then b is actually 0. So 0 is equal to u square is actually 40 square plus 2 into g is actually here we are um, drawing the stone upwards. So, upward motion g is taken as minus. So, we can take minus 10 into h. Okay. So, we got 40 square minus 20 h. Listen to it. Here, uh, actually, uh, it is against the gravitational force. That object moves upward. But, okay. Object moves upward. So, in that case, we have to take g as negative. So, um, instead of 10, we have to take minus 10. By simplifying this, we get what 20 h is equal to 1600 and h is equal to 1600 divided by 20. Actually, it is 80 meter. And so, this is the maximum height reached by the stone. Actually, it is 80 meter. The maximum height reached by the stone is actually 80 meter. Next, we have to find the total distance, the net displacement. We have to find the net displacement. Okay. Then after reaching the ground, actually, uh, um, the initial position and final position coincide. So, what is the net displacement? Net displacement is actually zero here. The net um, displacement is equal to zero because the initial and final position coincide. So, the net nest Net displacement is equal to 0. Next, we have to find the total distance. Total distance is what actually? Okay, total distance is uh, the maximum height is 80. Again, it reaches ground. So, it is 80 plus 80. Actually, it is uh, 160 meter. That is the total distance uh, covered by the stone. Isn't it? 
here is uh, here a, a stone is uh, thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 40 meter per second so u is equal to 40 meter per second then taking g as 10 meter per second square find the maximum height reached by the stone we have to find the maximum height h reached by the stone and also we have to find the net displacement and also the total distance traveled by the covered by the stone Okay, you know at the maximum height the final velocity v becomes 0. So we have the relation v square equal to u square plus 2g h. Okay, here the stone is uh, throwing upwards. So the g is taken as negative. Listen it. So uh, we have to write 40 square plus 2 into minus 10 into h. And simplifying this we get 40 square minus 20 h and the value of height. Maximum height attained is actually 80 meter. And here the net displacement is 0 because the initial and final position coincide. Okay. And the net total distance covered by the stone is actually 80 plus 80. That is actually the 160 meter. Okay. Next the 10th question. That is the last question. A ball is thrown vertically upwards with a, with a velocity of 49 meter per second. Calculate the maximum height to which it rises. Then total time it takes to return to the surface of earth. Okay, that is the question. Here a ball uh, is thrown in vertically upwards with a velocity of that is u is equal to 49 meter per second. The ball, the ball is thrown with a velocity of 49 meter per second. So its initial velocity u is equal to 49 meter per second. We have to find the maximum height to which it rises. Okay. So at the maximum when it reaches the maximum height, the final velocity becomes zero. Okay, then acceleration due to gravity g is equal to here the stone is thrown vertically upwards. So actually it is minus 9.8 meter per second. Okay, don't forget to put this negative sign. Uh, suppose when an object moves against the gravitational force, that is an upward, the acceleration due to gravity is you have to take it as negative. Okay. Suppose when we drop a ball downward, in that case, g is actually positive. Okay, actually it is in the direction of, here both are in the same direction. The velocity and acceleration are in the same direction. That case we will take the g as positive. Isn't it? Here the uh, acceleration is actually downward, but the object moves upward. In that case you have to take g as minus 9.8 meter per second square. Isn't it? So first we have to find the maximum height at any h. That thing we have to find. We are considering the relation. V square equal to u square plus 2g h. Okay, v square is actually 0. 0 is equal to u square is 49 square uh, actually plus 2 into minus 9.8 into h actually. So, 49 square minus 2 into 9.8 into h. From this, h can be written as 49 square divided by 2 into 9.8. Actually, it is on 22.5 meter. By simplifying this, we will get on 22.5 meter. Isn't it? Okay, that is actually the maximum height attained. Next, we have to find total time it takes to return to the surface of earth from the maximum height to the earth surface. Okay. From the maximum part time, uh, it will takes to return to the earth surface. That thing we have to find Okay, but in order to find that time, first we have to calculate the time taken by the stone to reach the maximum height. That thing first we have to find. Then only we can uh, find this time. That is the time taken by the stone to return to the earth surface. So first we can calculate the time taken by the stone to reach the maximum height. Using this relation that is V is equal to U plus GT. V is equal to U plus gt here v is 0 so 0 is equal to 49 into minus 9.8 into time t okay from this time t can be written as 49 divided by 9.8 actually it is 5 second 49 divided by 9.8 that is actually 5 second listen it that is the time taken by the ball to reach the maximum height Next, we have to find the time taken by the stone to return to the time taken by the ball. 
to return to the earth surface. Okay, actually it is 2 into 5. Okay, double. Okay, 2 into 5 that is actually 10 seconds. To, to reach here it will take sir, 5 seconds and again to, from here to this again 5 seconds. So, actually it is 10 seconds. Okay, and here uh, here a ball is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 49 meter per second. So, its initial velocity is U is 49 meter per second. Calculate the maximum height. Okay, when it attains the maximum height, the final velocity becomes 0. And here G is taken as minus 9.8 because the ball is throwing upwards. Okay, we have to first find the maximum height. Considering the relation V square equal to U square plus 2 G H here. Uh, U square is 49 square plus 2 into minus 9.8 into H. So, height H is, uh, H is actually 122.5 meter. That is the maximum height attained by the ball. Next part is actually we have to find the total time um, takes to return to the surface of earth. Okay, total time to return to the surface of earth. For that, first we have to calculate the time taken by this ball to reach the maximum height. So, we are considering this relation V equal to U plus GT. Then 0 is equal to 49 into U is final value U. So here the final velocity is 0. So, 0 equal to u is 49 into g minus 9.8 into t. From this time t is equal to 49 divided by 9.8 that is actually 5 seconds. Next we have to find the time taken by the ball to return to the earth surface. Actually it is 2 into 5 that is 10 seconds. Okay. Okay children. Uh, that is the end of today's class. Also we have finished the lesson gravitation and the problems are also we have finished the uh, next class, we can start uh, the new lesson. Okay, if you have any doubt on doing the problems, uh, please ask to me. Okay, okay children, thank you.